What's up guys, I wanna start this video with this because I was inspired to do so as I was editing my, um, my uh, next video in the series, this video, someone commented on the last series and that last series video I used a different time lapse song and they didn't like it and they told me it was a boring song so I took that and I realized, all right, I'll change it up. So I just wanna start this and say, first off, thank you to everyone that's been watching the video, supporting the channel, it means a lot. I'm glad that I actually have people that are watching and enjoying the stuff I'm talking about, showing all the BMWs and stuff. So I just wanna say thank you, and because of that, I wanna hear from you guys. I want you guys to let me know, have you been enjoying the videos? What could I improve on? What would you like to see more? You know, too much time lapse, too little time lapse, too much talking, too little talking. Um, too little content on a certain car you wanna see. I wanna know whatever you guys think when you watch my videos. Is the audio good enough? Is the camera quality good enough? Are my camera angles good enough? Is the lighting good enough? I've already mentioned, but I'm hooking up a bunch of lights in the garage for my uh, E30 swap videos so that those videos will be fresh and well lit for you guys. But uh, yeah, I just wanna say I'm looking for constructive criticism because I really appreciate everyone that's been rocking with the videos. So I wanna hear from you guys because I wanna make these videos even better for you as we carry on. So that's just a little prequel to the video I wanted to ask you guys, but let's get right into the video now. So the car's running good, but it still has that thumping noise that I thought was the Guibo. It's hard to tell if it's coming from the front right or the, you know, right in the center here. I know you guys can't see anything because it's dark and this car's got these tints, but I don't know what it is and it's thumping, it's thumping pretty good. Uh, it's it's not necessarily strictly straight line like thumping. It kind of happens when you uh, you know, pull the car right. If like if I you know shake the car, it occurs a lot more. Uh, so it, it seems like it's like a suspension component, but everything looks solid. I'm gonna have to get under there and check again. Uh, so I gotta look into that. Aside from that, everything's pretty nice except it grinds first sometimes. Uh more so when cold so could need a bleed and, or it could need uh, a trans fluid uh, change I'll probably throw the, the magic red line in it anyway these gut drags love their uh, red line uh, I can't think of the exact name off the top of my head but whatever red line ATF is uh, I've had a few G250s that uh, grind it and that would heal them every time but I'm gonna try to get this noise for you guys so you guys can hear what I'm talking about you can kind of hear it right now if I shake the wheel, here, let me get away from traffic first. Like, let me see. It's not doing it right now. Oh, you just heard one there. So with the car in the air, essentially driving it in the air, there is no clunking. So it is definitely a front suspension component. It's not a drive shaft component, which is a relief. So I pinpoint it to be this side, and maybe if you can see with one hand, this side's got a fair amount of play in it, but not only this way, which is sometimes uh, normal with a steering box, but it has a lot of play forward-wise, like forward and back. So something's not right here. You'll see I already have these laid out. That's kind of a little hint. But I got underneath the car and immediately I noticed the lower control arm ball joint is pretty destroyed. But not only that, the upper is pretty destroyed. For some reason, it looks like this car had half of them replaced because if you look at this side, you can see how clean that ball joint is and you can see how clean that ball joint is. So it seems that this side has had its control arms replaced but not this side, very weird. And then you'll also see, maybe here, this tie rod came loose. So that's that's making a little clunking noise, but that's not my main clunk. Uh, what I think the main clunk is, what well, the first thing I thought it was the lower control arm, because you can see here I can twist it, and uh, I'm gonna set this up so you guys can see, and I can use both hands here. So if we do this, you'll see there is some motion here but I caught myself before doing all this because to get to the lower one, you actually have to pull off the entire uh, knuckle here because the bolt goes through the bottom and it's underneath this. So luckily, I don't think I have to do that because I came over here and it might the camera might be just in the wrong place. But let's see if you guys can see this. When I pull it back and forth, 
the upper is actually moving a lot and it's split right here. And if I put my hand on it when I move it, I feel the vibration of the clunk through the control arm. So let me do it one more time. Maybe you guys can see this. So yeah, the uh, upper is, I believe, what is giving me my problems. Uh, that ball joint has a lot of play in it. Uh, but also the bottom one does. So realistically, both these arms need to be replaced. But the bottom one's a lot more of a pain in the ass than the top. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the top. Uh, I didn't want to do it today, but I might just give it a shot because I think it, they're not too difficult. I've done it on my Calypso before. Um, but And now it wasn't even with the right tools. I do have a pickle fork now, so I think I should be able to get this without too much uh, too much pain. I don't have a torch on me, so that might suck. I'll try it, and I'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I believe that's my culprit. If it's not, then I'm going to do the uh, lower. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, they honestly both move. Uh, so it is going to be one of them. But the only reason why I'm doing that is because in the box of goodies that the PO gave me, he actually gave me both the uh brand new lower brand new upper and i checked and they are the right side so that explains that it, i noticed from this kit or this box of stuff he gave me it seemed like he bought the whole suspension kit you'll see there's the uh the drag link so i was kind of wondering where the other half of the stuff was and it looks like it was done i don't know why one side would be done and not the other but one of these two things is the culprit we're going to start with the upper because that's easier and then we're going to go on to the lower if that does not fix my issue. Uh, if it's neither of these, then the car's getting parted out and I'm done because I don't know what else it would be. The E34 gods are looking out for me today. I popped that off with the new impact. Thank God. Shout out to this Milwaukee. This is the best thing I've ever got. But the ball joint it popped itself out. That's how worn it is. So once the bolt came out, it just popped right up. I didn't have to do any pickle fork, no hammering, no nothing. That is the hardest, most pain in the ass thing on any other BMW I've ever done. So this is a huge plus. You can see though, how much play that thing has. Like, a lot. This is completely shot. So that is sick though, because that part's really easy to get out. It's just one bolt. So I'm hyped. The in, this should take honestly 10 minutes and we'll be done and go for that test drive. Like I said, 50-50 shot here. So either this will fix it or it won't. We'll see. Voila, there she is right next to the new one. You can see that's crazy. This is what a new one looks like. Absolutely no play with uh, one hand, even two, I can barely get it. They do, you know, move if you put enough pressure on them. Obviously it's a ball joint, but definitely shouldn't be able to do all this. So I'm gonna pop this one in. And the one thing to note here, if you're using this as a DIY, they say that when you torque down this bolt, the car has to be under load. So that means I gotta lower this thing onto wood and then tighten it from there. That's the best way to do that. If you notice in that time lapse, I actually torqued down the uh, bolt that I specifically just said to you guys. Do not torque down until the car is under its own weight. So I had to loosen that up, got this in, everything's ready to go. I'm going to tighten up that one tie rod and then put the wheel on, lower the car, tighten it down, and fingers crossed that the test drive goes well. Uh, so then I'm finished up with uh, this stupid stuff and I don't have to pull off the whole spindle. I really do not want to have to pull off the spindle. It sucks to be doing all this work on a car that I know I'm not gonna be, you know, keeping or driving forever or uh, realistically a car that is gonna be parted out in five, six months. So that's why it sucks. But at least if I can get some good, you know, five months of driving out of it, I feel like that's better than dealing with a blown out ball joint. So far, things are looking good. Haven't heard the noise. And considering that I would hear that noise just pulling out of my driveway, I'd say we are good to go. Looks like I got my 50-50 guess right. Uh, I'm not a professional uh, control arm analyst, but it, it was kind of, you know, seemed to me like the upper was in worse condition than the lower. 
and that the upper had more uh, unnatural motion that was causing a clunk. Uh, yes, the lower moved quite a bit, but it didn't, you know, it wasn't causing any, from the looks of it though, it wasn't causing any clunk. So I can't say for sure, but uh, yeah, it definitely is uh, fixed because there is no noise. So you, you honestly can feel right away how much replacing the upper control arms like tightens up the front end of this car like it immediately made the right side feel more firm than the left given the left has been replaced but they're not as new so you could there here there you can hear it grind first it doesn't happen every time it's very random but uh i think the red line will fix that no problem usually it's second gear that grinds from like you know beating it up so that's a good thing that seconds clean i think it really comes down to just low on fluid or no fluid or needs to have the clutch bled, which I might do. Clutch on this car feels pretty good. Uh, I'm obviously not gonna do a clutch job. If I pull the trans out, then I'm done with this thing. But, but yeah, the problem's fixed. The uh, the noise is gone. I'm still having that stupid squeal from the rear left. I don't know. I don't know if that's the backing plate or if it's just the rust on the uh, the uh, rotors from sitting. So that kind of uh, is annoying. But aside from that, everything else is uh, cleared up. Just gotta do the uh, the trans which, oh my God, I hate the feeling that, it's, you feel it in your teeth, the grind. It's, it's a really just nasty feeling grind. But uh, that'll be in the same video, like I said. So I'll pick this video back up when I have my red line fluid and I'm ready to uh, jump into the trans. All right, so it's a couple days later. We're back with the winter beater. I got it up on all four jack stands even. And like I said, we're changing the trans fluid. I told you guys it's shifting uh, or grinding first occasionally, nothing else. So I'm pretty sure it's a uh, just a trans uh, fluid thing. Uh, I found that these uh, Getrags love to grind first or second, and almost always Redline D4 ETF fixes it. So fingers crossed it fixes it. I thought I had to buy a kit. I almost bought the trans flush kit. It's like 60 bucks, I think, and it comes with two of these. And then I looked over here on my shelf of oils and I found that I have two nearly full bottles. And I remembered that when you're doing the uh, trans flush on these, they take like, they take a bottle and like just a little bit of the other bottle. So the kit comes with two. You only really use one and like maybe a quarter. So I basically have two almost full bottles, which is all I'll need. If you guys aren't familiar with this process, you always want to take out your fill plug before your drain plug because if you drain it and that is seized, then you're going to have a trans with no fluid in it. So you can see here this trans looks like it's uh, looks like it's been leaking. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was a little low on uh, fluids, which would explain why it would grind. So on the contrary, this thing was actually overfilled. Uh, you guys saw as I pulled off the fill plug, uh, actually a pretty decent amount kind of spilled out. And when I opened this, it was like a, a rush of fluid, uh, which leads me to believe that this trans has had the fluid replaced because it didn't even look original. It actually looked not horrible. Uh, it, it wasn't black or anything, uh, which is a little scary because that's that leaves you to like hope that someone didn't try to band-aid like a grinding first with a trans flush uh, like I'm basically doing. Uh, I got a lot of trust in this red line. If uh, this doesn't do the trick, then I'm probably gonna bleed the, uh, the clutch because it feels a little wonky. So I'm sure a slave wouldn't hurt. Uh, I don't really wanna do a slave job, but uh, bleeding it never hurts. So we'll see. Once I put the plugs back in, or the drain plug at least, if you guys watch my touring manual saw video, you know this is what I use, just this little hand pump. It goes right into the uh, red line bottles and uh, you pump it and it's kind of a pain in the ass. And I managed to somehow throw out like my back slash shoulder doing yard work and stuff. So I'm in a pretty decent amount of pain down here. This kind of sucks, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna get there.
just like that all the fluids in plugs are in so we are ready to go i'm gonna uh hop up get in the car start it and since it's up in the air in the back i'm just gonna start driving it while it's in the air and see uh see if i get any grinds fingers crossed all right so it's a little hard to get in the gear yeah she definitely definitely still doesn't like first well it is unfortunate but the redline atf has finally not done the trick for me so i uh bled the clutch and it wasn't even uh, didn't even need to be bled uh did all that and it still grinds so i found that if you hold the clutch down for a little bit like a few seconds and go into first you won't get a grind uh but if you go in quickly it grinds which is telltale that the uh, first gear synchro is bad um if all the gears did it i would say yes it's a master or a slave but it's only first and if you hold the clutch down no grind so that's basically what happens with a lot of these transmissions first or second wears um first is pretty livable with though because uh you're obviously only using it to start and all it means is that you basically have to hold down the clutch for i mean i'm talking like a second longer than you normally would just to get it into gear without grinding you could obviously still jam it in it's not good for the trans but um it's something that i can live with so i'm not you know too worried about it but in terms of selling the swap later on that kind of sucks because that's going to kill uh some of the value of the swap but um you know, I could throw a slave at it, could try a master, but if you guys watch my touring video again, you'll know that I definitely do not want to do a master. So, um, I really don't think those would help it. I think it is first, but I have had cases like with this thing where uh, bad, uh, bad slave caused it to grind when it was cold. But, um, yeah, whatever. Oh, well, it's, it's drivable. I'll live with it, which sucks. But we're chipping away one by one things with this car. So that'll conclude this video. Uh, it's not, you know, not perfect, but it drives pretty darn good. So uh, next video is going to be doing the uh, interior drivability things, not the detail, but like uh, it needs uh, window regulators and it needs a radio install. So just those few minor interior things to make it more enjoyable of a driver. So yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. See ya.